I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my life living in Central America. I'm based in Leon, Nicaragua, and today I have a challenge I'm going to issue to all of you. There's been a lot of talk in a lot of different directions on the channel in the last couple of weeks, and there's a lot of questions, a lot of people who are interested, and I think Nicaragua has a challenge for you. And that challenge is that maybe you should just come down and check it out for yourself. And we're going to talk about that. How easy is it? What does it really take? And what can you learn? Let's get to that right after the bump. For a lot of people, the idea that Nicaragua might be a really great location, not just for a vacation, which of course it is, but possibly as a place that they could relocate, retire, become an expat, or just spend some time as a digital nomad is something that they're just discovering. It may have never been on their radar. In some cases, they may never have even heard of it. It recently made the news in Canada, but it has been on the uh, kind of radar of people in the United States and other locations as well. But there's been a lot of sudden talk about it, both because there is a lot of people around the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, who are starting to suddenly think about the idea of relocating as possibly being an important part of their future lifestyle. And a lot of people are starting to worry about the erosion of their, uh, their nest egg when they're going to retire. So all these things put a lot of new areas onto their scope for research. And a really important one is Nicaragua because it's incredibly safe. It's very nearby to most of the areas who are looking at it. And the cost of living is very, very low. Well, that makes it kind of a perfect place. And on top of that, it is so welcoming with really easy tourist visas that allow you to stay more or less indefinitely with nothing more to be done and really simple uh, residency options should you need to go down that path, which we have lots of videos that describe all these things and help you understand some of the scope because so many things in Nicaragua are so much more easy and flexible than most countries that it can be confusing for newcomers who think they have to do a lot of hard things they don't actually need to do because other markets require those. One of the things that surprises so many people when they first do research on Nicaragua or even later because they don't believe it or don't come across this important information when they start is just how easy it is to come and stay in Nicaragua. It's ridiculously cheap to get here. Let's start with that. If you're looking at coming down, flights out of Miami can be as low as about $100. And from nearly anywhere in North America, you can get to Miami for very cheap. So do some research. And Spirit is your main airlines, Avianca is your second. There are some other choices, but they will get you here very, very inexpensively. So if there's a price uh, problem barrier in coming down, take a look there. There's probably a way to get here very inexpensively. And then once you're here, hotels are generally quite inexpensive. Food is very cheap. The overall lifestyle is very very inexpensive and it's very easy to take public transportation or taxis for nearly anything that you need so there's rare that you're going to run into any individual cost items that are going to be high here in country unless it's something that you really want to do you want to stay in some luxury accommodations or whatever you're going to spend quite a bit more money that's absolutely fine but if budgetary concerns are something that is worrying you then nicaragua probably has you covered the cost of living here and the cost of visiting here is so incredibly low that you can generally come and live and if you're spending any amount of time, if we're just talking about a few weeks, it's just an extended vacation. If you're trying to be frugal, in many cases, you can save so much money by being in Nicaragua that it may offset the cost of the flights. It may be very similar to if you had done a staycation. So that's worth considering a little bit of extra research. And of course, in all circumstances, get down there in those comments, ask us questions. You need help finding a cheap airline, not knowing what path to take, what air, airline to, to uh, what airport to fly out of, uh, where to stay, which cities to visit, all of that. You can find a lot of that information here on the channel or just ask your questions or hang out for Thursday night's live streams when we generally cover that stuff in real time. I had to move out here because people are working on my lawn and it's super loud. The entire day they've been running lawnmowers. So every time I try to record, I end up having to escape again. So I've come out here where they have not maintained. This is just a wild area. The grass is really high. It's a little bit wild. So here in Nicaragua, things are incredibly safe. And if you're watching my channel, you probably see this all the time. We go out for walks in barrios, in city centers, in different towns all over the country. Even in the capital, I'll just go wandering about and people are always amazed by how safe it looks. Now, some people have some comments about, well, if things are safe, why do you have high walls? And of course, we need to keep animals in and out. People will still steal things, even if it's uh, very, very safe. 
And of course, we leave our doors wide open. So of course we need walls if we're going to do all those things. So those are one of those things that many people in North America see and point as, oh, that looks scary. But people here go, that's what safety looks like. We don't have to lock our doors. That seems scary to us. So Nicaragua is a very different place. And with all the talk that's been going on, especially with the new mentions of Nicaragua coming out of Canada, a lot of people are just questioning what is Nicaragua really like? How do I find out more about it? And of course, they go and look at places like the US State Department website and get really scary information or really scary sounding information, which of course, if you look broadly, the US State Department has scary information about just about anywhere that isn't an ally of the United States. They have that as a tool to direct people to wherever they think vacationing would be most beneficial for the US government, of course. So if you're a Canadian or American, you're looking at that, be prepared. That is not a useful, useful resource for you. That is a resource for the American government. It is not there to provide you good guidance. That's not its mandate. But in all these cases, there tends to be a lot of people spreading information. Oh, I know about Nicaragua. I remember Nicaragua. It is, and they'll say something about it, something that's very visibly untrue and logically probably doesn't hold a lot of water either if you just spend some time thinking about it. But it's scary because so many people mention these things. Of course, those people haven't been to Nicaragua or are not here now, and they say that they have current knowledge or they claim to know something about it, but rarely what they say matches what you see. So there has been traditionally a lot of misinformation about Nicaragua, and there's a ton of reasons that we could go into, but we won't hear as to why there's a huge incentive for a lot of countries outside of the region to want to disparage the Nicaraguan economy. So that we know is the case, and it's easy to see that Nicaragua, you can look at statistical websites and see that it's in very safe. You can look at statistical websites and see that it's very low cost living. You can watch videos like mine where we're not selling any relocation service. There's nothing that you can hire us to do. I mean, you can pay me to talk on the phone for a little bit, but you can buy me a coffee to, to pick my brain, but there's no service for moving down. We don't have a relocation service. We're not incentivized to get you to come to Nicaragua. I can just as easily have a phone call with you and tell you other places you could go, right? There's no, there's no financial tie to shows like this. Uh, you know, go watch the immense coffee movement, for example, as well, showing a different part of Nicaragua very commonly. So you watch shows like this and you say, well, I'm pretty sure this is clearly safe. This matches the numbers that we see from the stats site. This matches what we would imagine about the region. All of this makes sense. It's clearly low cost of living. So the challenge here, the thing that I'm going to issue for you on behalf of Nicaragua and many countries in the region is now that you're kind of interested, your, your interest has been piqued as far as maybe I should investigate Central America more broadly. Maybe I should see if there are some amazing options. Maybe early retirement could work for me. Maybe there's a way to protect my nest egg and, and not only be able to retire the way I thought I would and now I'm afraid, but I could be looking at expanded personal liberties. I could be looking at lower cost of living and actually retiring early and still having more buying power. I could be safer than I was at home. Like the number of things that may be an improvement for you wow, that's some stuff that will definitely make you interested, but you're worried. But what if, what if I've heard all these things? So here's my challenge. You know it's safe enough. You know it's cheap enough. Those things are facts. My challenge is hop a plane and come down. See for yourself. Seeing for yourself will do a number of things for you. One, it's going to help tell you really quickly if Nicaragua just feels right for you. Sure. But two, it's going to tell you whether the idea of moving to another country, the idea of relocation, the idea of digital nomadry, the idea of early retirement, the idea of all these things, whether or not that works for you, or it could just be a vacation. It's going to answer some of those big things. But the big third one, and this is the thing that so many agencies and governments and locations are afraid of is that so much information has been spread about Nicaragua and it's so easy to see it. More than other countries in the region, if you come down and visit Nicaragua, give it a week or two, spend some time, actually get to know people, travel around, see what it's actually like. Avoid San Juan del Sur. It's just going to repeat a lot of misinformation. You're going to be spending all your time trying to avoid expat scams. So it'll be fine once you're established. You want to check it out. It's wonderful. But there's a lot of warnings that come with that. Come see actual Nicaragua. Come see real Nicaraguan people. See what Granada is like. See what Leon is like. See what Managua is like. Honestly, go see what Matacalpa is like, right? 
don't worry about, oh, I hear Managua's big and scary. Yeah, for Nicaraguans who are used to small and so, so safe, but when you realize it's probably safer than Toronto, sure, you may not want to go to Toronto, but it's still probably safer than that. Like, you can really walk around the streets. You really can feel confident in being most places. Even as a foreigner who may not know which places to go to, you still feel pretty safe. And if you have someone who tells you where it's really, really, like, it's just, it's so good. If you come down and witness Nicaragua firsthand, it's fine if Nicaragua is not the place that's right for you. And it's fine if no place is the right place that's right for you. Meaning, maybe staying in your home country is the right thing. You decide that, you know, I, I looked into it, I seriously evaluated it, and, and relocation, retirement abroad, digital nomadry, these aren't right for me. That's fine. 100% absolutely okay. But if you come down and find out what Nicaragua is really like, you will come home with so much more information, not just about the world outside, not just that you will understand Central America so much better, but you'll have a, an insight into what you're being told by your own media and your own governments at home, whatever governments those are. I'm not going to pick on a specific one, but in many cases, people are looking at other governments for information, right? They, just, they feel like government websites must be uh, informative when that may not be the case. Having that knowledge and coming back and being like, whoa, I saw it firsthand. I know this is fake. I know this is fake. I know this is false news. These are obviously obviously meant for people who were never going to follow up. That one thing is going to give you so much insight into the world, so much more power as a citizen, even in your own country, and much more power to look at the world more broadly and say, well, I feel like there's a lot of places I could go, right? It's not going to just inform you about Nicaragua, which of course it will, but it's going to tell you, wait, if they're telling me that about Nicaragua and that's so false, what are all the other things that are so false? And of course, some things aren't false. Some things are true. It will help you get an insight into how easily you can be manipulated, how easily you can be lied to, and just how much of possibly much better is out there than you realize, and how much of what you're being told may be, maybe, for the purpose of convincing you not to look in any further. That's a challenge that Nicaragua is issuing. The challenge on one side is don't look behind the curtain. Don't see what's going on. Just trust us it's not good. You don't want to leave your home country. I am issuing the challenge from Nicaragua. Come and actually find out firsthand. We're not afraid in Nicaragua of you finding out what Nicaragua is really like. Are there negatives? Absolutely. Is there poverty? You bet. Is there a problem with litter? Sadly, that is very much a real thing. Do some people actually pee on the side of the road? Yup, it happens. We are guilty as charged. There are negatives, or at least perceived negatives, that the last one is, is just seen as a cultural difference. Litter is a real problem. Are there negatives? Yeah, come see what they actually are. But are they dangerous? Is it expensive? No, those are not true. And those are easily, easily disproven by just visiting. Nicaragua has nothing to lose by you coming to visit. You will immediately have the information you need to expose that the information on this channel is correct. Maybe you can't prove everything on this channel, but you'll know that our basis, that our foundation is accurate, and that will give you dec deciding power. That will give you a much better insight into yourself and how you're going to view the world. And then if you can make really, really well-educated decisions about how you are going to consider relocation, retiring, all those things. You can go back and have that knowledge that you need so that when you're evaluating possibly Nicaragua, possibly staying where you are, maybe evaluating a Mexico or a Spain or a South Africa, and you can say, well, now I know that these places are probably much better than I'm being told. I'm probably being discouraged at every, at every chance because my government doesn't want me to leave. Uh, other people in my country don't want me to leave. They want me to stay and be part of the tax base. They want me to stay and, and provide for other people. But you need to consider what's good for you as well. What's good for you, what's good for your retirement, what's good for your children. And by having that knowledge, Nicaragua is confident that you can come here and discover really good things about Nicaragua. Nicaragua is confident that if you come here and discover firsthand what it's really like, that you will go back with a positive view. May, not necessarily a view that says this is the right choice for you. Absolutely, the majority of people are not going to come visit and decide that it's the place to move. But if everyone came and found out what Nicaragua was really like, it would change the world. Not because Nicaragua is the greatest country in the world. That may be true, but not because of that. Because it will give you an insight into what can be done 
on low budgets, on how things actually function here, on what you're being told and how that is reflected in real life. Those are things that the majority of your governments are afraid of you finding out. They are terrified of you coming down, pulling back the curtain and seeing what's really going on. And Nicaragua is, is hoping that you come and learn because they want to be able to brag about how great they are. They want you to come down and celebrate what life is like here, be a part of the cultural experience, and they want you to go back with an open mind and realize that maybe pulling back the curtain gave you a lot of new information. You're choosing the right pill and discovering for yourself what's really the truth. That's all we're asking. That is the challenge. Actually investigate and find out the truth. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show and I will see all of you hopefully in person right here in Nicaragua tomorrow. You can also support the channel. Click on one of the videos that pops up on the screen. I would appreciate it.